Convex, one of the kite makers at Pedal and Kites. In this video today we're going to make a Freddy's Dolphin kite together. This is a great kite if you've never made a show kite before and if you have it's a great addition to your collection. The materials you'll need to make your kite are your kite kit, your instructions, I find it handy to have them printed in front of me, a measuring tape, some pins, some tailor's chalk or something to mark your fabric with, scissors, good quality thread, glue is handy and your sewing machine doesn't need to be fancy industrial machine, this machine is a domestic machine, it's as old as I am and it's still going strong. Also a light is handy so you can see what you're doing. A few tips before we get started, you may find that while making your kite the pieces don't fit together 100% perfect, that's okay. Sometimes we need to stretch one piece of fabric to make them line up better and if we make a mistake and have to unpick, that's fine. It happens all the time, even to the professionals. We also want to lay out our pieces before we start and it is a good idea to use your tailor's chalk to mark the inside or the reverse of the fabric so you don't get the left and the right side pieces confused. And when we're sewing you want to allow a good 10mm seam so that your kite doesn't break a seam while flying and all your hard work comes undone. Before we get started, the video will have timestamps so that if you just want to follow one particular piece of the instructions you can skip ahead to that section. Failing that you can watch the whole thing and we can make the kite together. So let's lay out our pieces. So in your kit you'll have all these pieces, might pay to lay them out in a nice big space so you can check that you have everything on the list. In addition to the pieces for your kite, you'll have two template pieces that we'll use at a later stage. You'll also have a bag that includes carabiners, bridle rope and ribbon to attach your bridle to your kite. What I'm going to do is go through all my pieces and mark the inside of my pieces so that I don't get left and right muddled up when I'm sewing because I can't have a dolphin with two right sides. So we're going to start by sewing the eye and the top of the mouth which is pages 2 and 3 in your instructions. For this you will need the black eye dots, the white eye pieces, the eye, temp, uh, eye panel and the white mouth panel. To start off, take our template and place it over our black mouthpiece, headpiece and we're going to place our eye using that template. With small pieces like this you can choose to pin it and then sew or you can use glue to hold them in place and then sew on top of those. So that's what I'm going to do. center of that we place our eye dot like that and then we can sew around the edges of those to secure them in place. Once we've sewn around the edges of that we will place right sides together and sew this this seam along here with a 10mm seam. Sewing nylon can be very slippery so putting a pin in your fabric can help hold it together and make sure you keep a tight grip on it. And back tack to start and finish your six. So you'll now have two completed eye and mouth pieces 
set those aside and we'll move on to the next stage. Our next steps are our fins, our dorsal fin and our pectoral fins. So that is pages 4 and 5 in your instructions. For the pectoral fins, fins, you want to sew the long piece and the curved edge together for both your left and your right, and both the black and the white. Once those seams are done, put those four pieces to one side for later use. Then we move on to the dorsal fins. And what we're going to do there is we're going to take our pieces and we're going to sew along this seam for both pieces. And we will attach our ribbon for our bridal point. Make sure this ends up on the outside. When we tack that in, we want to sew back and forth over that a few times to make sure it's nice and secure. Once we have the two pieces joined together for both halves, we will sew right sides together to create our whole fin. Now we're going to sew our dorsal fin pieces together and when they're flat, these pieces fit together in a nice curve. However, when we want to sew them, they will curve away from each other. So we just have to work the seams together as we sew our way around. See, once we've stitched those seams together, it sits down just like we want it to. So now we're going to take our two dorsal fin pieces, put them right side together, and we're going to sew a seam up and round, leaving the base open and when we get to the little tab pieces at the top we're going to fold and put in our piece of bridal ribbon. When we do that we fold it in half and we place it on the inside between the two layers of fabric so that when we turn the kite right way around our bridal tab is on the outside of our kite. I'm going to have to unpick. It won't be the first time. So when you're unpicking you want to be careful that you don't accidentally cut your fabric. Um, so I like to pull it apart and just snip the stitches and give it a yank. And just work your way around slowly until you get back to where you need to start sewing again. So once you've finished sewing your two halves together, turn it in the right way and you have a completed dorsal fin and we'll set that aside until we get to assembling the body. So we're now going to move on to assembling the body. Having a decent sized space to lay out your work helps use my kitchen floor. This is page 6 of your instructions. So you want to lay out your pieces. We've got the yellow and the black body pieces, the grey body piece and the black tail down the end there. What we're going to do first is we are going to sew the seam between the yellow and black. Then we will attach the grey along the edge and the tail on the end of those. Do the same for both sides. 
and then put those pieces to one side. Next we are putting the mouthpiece we made earlier onto the lower body which is page 7 in your instructions and you'll want to attach this seam here for both sides and then set those pieces aside too. Our next step is to attach the black part of our fins to the piece of body that we just made. And what you want to do is you want to lay it out so that with the right sides facing up, the short piece is towards the back, away from the eye. So our short section goes towards the back. Then we lay right sides together and we want to stitch a seam around this. So seams like this are really, like I said, really counterintuitive. You're wanting to start sewing at the head end with your seam here like this. And this is the line we want to sew along, but this is the way our dorsal fin goes. So we start sewing and then we just pull the black piece around as we sew and make our edges line up. Trust the process. Yeah. Then we have our thin sewn on to our body. Right, our next step is attaching the lower dorsal fins to the body. So we want to have the narrow stitch piece going to the back scoop shape. So this little stitched piece wants to be heading up to this end here. We're going to start sewing here and stitch it on just like we did the previous ones. have the lower fin attached to the lower body. So the next step is to sew the top of the dolphin body to the side of the dolphin body. Lay your pieces out, page 10 in our instruction seats. We're going to start sewing at the nose end and take it all the way down 
to the end of the white for both sides. Have a look at your seams, particularly any ones that go around difficult shapes. Make sure that you don't have any pinches or bunches or funny gathers. Um, but yeah, so do both sides and then we're on to the next step. Right, next up is page 11 where we attach the main body to the belly. What we're going to do is we're going to lay our pieces. Okay, right sides together, so this is the wrong side that we can see. And we're going to start by sewing around the fin. Once we've sewn around the fin, we can join up under the chin and along the rest of the body to create one side of the kite. We'll then do the same with the other side before we move on to the next step. So we're starting off by sewing upper and the lower pectoral fins together. With our fin we want to make sure that the points at the end line up so again if you have to stretch one side or the other to make it fit then go ahead because we can't be having wonky fins pieces out that we've attached onto the edges there. And that we don't pinch any layers because you see there's a bit of give in here once we attach them. seams don't want to match. There's probably a 10 mil difference between where they end so I'm going to stretch this black layer slightly to get them closer together. that I've taken that down to about a four mil mismatch which I can live with. I'm going to instead of back tack 
checking and stopping, sewing my fin, I'm going to carry on down the back of the uh, belly of the kite. You want to work outward from those seams that you've just done rather than back towards them because if your fabric has a mismatch, you'll end up with a little bubble of fabric that you've got to try and get rid of. So start where you finish sewing and work towards the opening of the kite. You want to check that your tail fin doesn't have any weird tuckers or bumps and you also want to check the same with your door section. Which is pretty good. Now we're going to sew that last top seam towards the head. Make sure when you restart you overlap your seams a bit so you don't have a gap. Um, that would be like a weakness. So just start by backtracking over your previous lot of backpack from attaching the dorsal fin and then you're off and away again. Again, there's some unusual shapes around this part, some wavy. So just take your time and twist that fabric around those shapes. Again, don't be afraid to have the needle. Double check where you started your fin. Make sure there's no hole or gap there. Do the same for the second body half and then we can move on to getting these two halves together. Okay, we're up to the section now where we join our two body halves together. So page 12 of your instructions. We're going to lay our two pieces with right sides together. And for this we're going to sew right along the top seam all the way down to the little flick at the end of the tail. In this section we're also going to add two more bridle points, so you need your little pieces of ribbon and I'm going to put my label, my PLK, PLK label in, in this section too, down near the end of the tail, so I'm going to have that ready to put in, so let's get sewing. So matting in my first bridle point here, the one on the nose, the folded half, and remember to place the folded half inside between the two seams. I've got my needle down to hold my fabric in place, I'm popping that ribbon between the layers, and then I'm going to back tack over that a few times to secure it in place. it's quite a long length and nylon fabric. Very, very slippery. So the pins help hold it in place while you make your way along. Okay, next bridle point. Needle down again. 
fold my thread, uh, ribbon, in between the layers, and then For that a couple of times, then we're going to continue down the length of the body. So the point I've reached here is our three holes in the top. We don't want to sew these closed. These are going to allow air to get into the dorsal fin. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to back tack, cut my thread here, and I'm going to sew this piece as a separate seam, this one as a separate seam, and then I'm going to start again and carry on here, carry on from this point down to the rest of the tail. Your machine again, take a pen. and pop it in those layers. And then you can put it away waist down your fabric so that your fabric there is free. You can leave it in while you. So what we're going to do, we're going to stop at the end of the navy, we're not going to carry on to the white, we'll do this when we sew the underside seam together. So our next step is attaching the dorsal fin to the top of the kite, so page 13 in your instructions. We want to have the kite laid out with the right side up and in your set of pieces you will have a fabric template. What we're going to do is we're going to lay out our kite nice and flat and then we are going to place the edge up against, up against our seam and trace around the outside with our I'm actually going to do is I'm going to pin it in place so that my line stays consistent as I draw it. So I'm going to pin these in place. If I can find a 
find the rest of my pennies. So this template we're using gives us our sew line. This is the line that we will attach the dorsal fin along um, so that we don't sew it on too wide or too narrow. So I've got my template in place and now I'm just going to trace around. And then once I've done that, I can move on to the other side. So now that we have our line chalked on the main body of our kite, we're going to feed it through under our needle um, till we get to the holes. Um, we're going to feed it through head first so that we know which direction we're facing and we can get the dorsal fin on the correct way around. Head first under my foot and then just feeding it through till I get to the holes. Okay, so pop my foot down to hold it in place. We're now gonna take our dorsal fin and find the front. So we should have it facing like this. We're going to start by folding the edge under. We're going to create a 10mm seam this way. And we're going to sew it down on top of the main body of our kite. So we'll have a visible seam. Fold it 10mm under, but keep your seam 4 or 5mm from the edge to keep it neat and tidy. I'm going to line up the seam of my dorsal fin with the seam on my body but I'm going to start a little bit round um, just because it's a little bit easier to start in a straight line than trying to start on a curve so I'm going to go to where my line is straight I'm going to make sure I don't have any other material under there line up this with my center seam fold her under underneath on that chalk line and put my foot down again so we start off as usual with a little back tack and then as we go we fold a little bit stitch a little bit fold a little more stitch a little more all the way around this gets a bit awkward because you're dealing with a lot of fabric that's going through this part of your machine but just be patient smooth out the fabric make sure you're only sewing the layers that you want to sew if you're finding that your fin is not lining up 100 percent with your chalk line that's okay again it's, it all slips around try and line up your rear seam with your body seam. Again, just for aesthetics balance. So have a look at where it's gonna lie, look where your seams are, and follow the most natural line. Just try and keep it symmetrical on both sides. Again, having your foot down helps you pivot the fabric without losing everything.
you get back towards the top, check where your seam wants to sit and try and ensure that we're not skewing the fabric on the other side and that it's going to sit nice and flat. Sometimes you might need to take just a smidge more seam, but that's alright too. To make it nice and flat to finish so that might mean altering your seam it might mean stretching things a little bit but that's all okay as well where are my snips I'm just going to use my scissors or something flat to help me tuck that little tail in that didn't want to go Pivoting as I go. Little tug here and we're away. Okay, with this you're gonna need to cut your thread both on top. And underneath. Okay, so we're up to page 14 in our instructions. We're closing up the underside of our dolphin. We're going to start at the mouth point, which is here, just there, and this also will be where our last bridal point goes. And for this step, we're going to close them up completely. So all the way along to the tail. So because the starting point and the bridal point are so close together at the front of the mouth, what I've done is I have placed a pin through my piece of ribbon at the bridal point and provided this is nice and straight up and down, you can start your sign here and you can sew straight over top of it as long as that pin is perpendicular, perpendicular to your sewing line you can sew right over it so I'm going to start my line back tack and then straight over the pin Back tack your bridal point in, and now that it's secure, I can just pull that out. Okay. Again, only if it's straight across perpendicular of your line of sewing. Any other way, you run the risk of not good things. So then we're going to sew all the way along, making sure that we don't accidentally catch any other layers like our fins, and then we'll have a three D kite. trying to have all my fabric on the table because if it's hanging off the edge the weight of the fabric can pull on the needle which makes it harder to keep your line straight so a side table can be really handy um, if I wasn't filming this I'd probably do it the other way on my dining table so I had more space to spread out but yeah. so that's why I keep calling all this fabric back because it is not letting me sew in a straight line Okay, 
automatic check as you're coming close to the end that your seams line up, give it a pull, make sure they're nice and even and then you're probably going to gonna want to flatten the <coughs> fins out and sew around just up into this navy on the top side just to secure that end because you don't want it coming apart on you. Okay, so we're now up to the mouth which is page 15 of our instructions. The instructions, I'm going to differ slightly from the instructions. The instructions say to do it with the right side facing out. But I can't for the life of me see how that would get my seams on the inside. So I'm going to leave my dolphin inside out. And I'm going to start first off by pinning my mouthpiece to the tip of the nose. When we go to sew this, we don't want to catch our bridal ribbons. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to fold this in half and I'm going to find the centre, okay, at the top so I can line it up with the centre seam. You can either mark it with chalk when you pick it up off the floor or I'm going to take my snips and just snip just a tiny notch. Oh, that is really terrible for A tiny notch. Ay, 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 here it is. Right. Tiny little notch in the end of my fabric. Um, that way I don't have to worry about hunting for my registration mark or it rubbing off. It's there. And that is so small it's going to be caught up in our seam. So now that I have that mark, I'm going to pin it to the top centre seam. Again, making sure that I avoid the bridal point ribbon that's in there. And then we're going to start sewing at the top and take it down till we reach the corner of the mouth. Okay, we're going to get as close into the corner of the mouth as we can and then we'll back tack here and do the other side. And then we're also going to do the same for the lower jaw. So, starting at the centre point, taking care to avoid my ribbon. This um, is going to make the 3D shape at the top of the nose. So when you lay this out, this beige fabric will not line up neatly with your mouth colour. You're going to need to pull it over. Again, like sewing around curves, just line your edges up and work slowly around that. Okay. Avoiding my bridal ribbon. Pin out. Going to sew a nice tender seam. to the corner of the mouth you might need to use the wheel to sew it closer nice strong because that's going to be our ear intake so it will take a bit of strain and then we do the other side so before I start sewing my bottom jaw on I'm just going to check my top point here make sure it's neat and tidy and that I haven't managed to sew down that bridal ribbon and that looks pretty good to me so we'll do the bottom one okay your bottom jaw has uh, a few more pieces of fabric coming in so make sure that you don't accidentally tuck in the ends of those pieces of fabric or sew your seam too close to the edge so that it leaves gaps okay If in doubt, take a slightly wider seam. Tuck that top 
one wheel out of the way so I don't accidentally catch it. And again, I want to get as close to that corner of the mouth as I can. And I'll do a couple of back packs to make it nice and strong. So again, check that I'm not accidentally catching these extra layers of fabric. Before I move on to the next step, we're going to check this point too. Okay, I haven't caught my seams funny, I haven't caught my bridle point. Alright, next step. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to sew the insides of our mouths together. This makes our air intake valve. And when the kite is full there, these will push back against the opening and seal it up. Help keep all that in there and help it keep them locked all day. So, we're going to, I'm going to start at the inner corner of the mouth. Again, I'm going to get as close to that corner as I can, making sure that I don't catch any of the under layers. Nice strong back tack, and I'm going to take it to the end. One of the additional extra things you can do if you wish. <coughs> Excuse me. is fold this edge over and stitch it down for a nice neat seam adds a bit of durability but this is heat cut so you should be fine so. all that over there take the corners of the mouth line them up and taper it a little bit towards that point just for neatness. A strong back tack as close to that corner as you can get. And then all the way off the edge. completes the sewing of our kite. So what we're going to do now is through this little mouth hole, feed our arm right the way down, all the way to the tail. And turn it in the right way. So we're up to the final step before we can test fly our kite and page 16 gives us information on how to tie our bridles. So all the bridles are, where's the camera, numbered <laughs> um, and it's important to attach the right number to the right bridle point as they are different lengths. Um, and that will help it fly right. So there's a real good instruction here for tying your bridle lines on. 
start with a knot and the end of your fabric and then make the little knot and pull tight to attach your bridle to your kite.